Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. Ursula pushed the shopping cart ahead of her, putting groceries into it. The supermarket wasn't too crowded, so she could move around the aisles without any hassle. At the same time, Ursula glanced at her list, double-checking if she had everything and mentally calculating if she had enough money to pay. The numbers seemed to add up, and without a second thought, she headed towards the checkout, confident that it should be enough. Especially since she only took a little bit of everything, without any extravagance. Lately, she had to be a bit more frugal because her salary was catastrophically insufficient. One could say that every penny mattered. Ursula kept that in mind and didn't allow any unnecessary expenses. However, she couldn't deny her children the occasional treat, as they weren't to blame for their financially disadvantaged family. With a brisk pace, she walked towards the checkout, unaware of what awaited her there. Moreover, her intuition remained silent, even though it usually signaled danger. But no, there were no indications today, and with a calm mind, Ursula rolled her cart to the conveyor belt. To her surprise, the cashier announced the total cost of the purchased items. It turned out that she was a little short on money. The saleswoman grumbled dissatisfiedly, saying, Sonora, you're holding up the line. Let's speed it up. Behind Ursula, a few people had indeed gathered, and almost everyone was staring at her, except for one elderly man. Frantically trying to scrape together all the change from her wallet, Ursula hoped until the very last moment that she would manage to gather the necessary amount. The saleswoman was losing her patience and allowed herself to make a derogatory remark. These beggars have completely lost their conscience, coming to the store without money. Finally, Ursula realized that she wouldn't be able to pay for the entire purchase and began to hurriedly choose which items to give up. Thoughts raced through her mind, maybe the milk or the cookies. But the children love them so much. No, perhaps I'll give up the porridge. In short, doubts tormented her, and she struggled to decide what to give up. And on top of that, the queue, fueled by the cashier's remarks, started complaining as well. Ursula was ready to leave everything and run away, just to avoid seeing those sideways glances and hearing the spiteful whispers. Tears welled up in her eyes. She barely held herself back from bursting into tears completely. She had come to the store to buy groceries and ended up in this embarrassing situation. Ursula had never before felt so humiliated in front of people. What will they think of me? These were the exact thoughts that crossed her mind. But unexpectedly, something happened that no one expected. That same elderly man from the queue, who had remained reserved, took out his wallet and handed money to the woman. Within a second, the banknote made its way into the cashier's hands, and with a dissatisfied snort, she took the money. It seemed that she couldn't escalate a grand scandal or revel in someone's misfortune. At the same time, she didn't miss the opportunity to taunt. There's no need to help these scammers, the bitter woman waved her hand, pointing at Ursula. They're used to living off others and are just waiting for a convenient moment to deceive a trusting person. Ursula felt very ashamed, wishing she could disappear when she was openly called a scammer. Her face turned crimson, and her hands clenched so tightly that her skin almost cracked. If it weren't for the bystanders and the surveillance camera, Ursula would have definitely expressed everything she thought about the woman. Quickly packing the groceries into bags, she thanked the man and headed towards the exit. However, right before the door, she turned around and said, I will definitely return everything, you can be sure of that. Ursula was truly grateful to this person because he had helped her in a difficult moment and saved her from disgrace. It's unknown how everything would have ended if the stranger hadn't paid the money and stopped the flow of profanities from the cashier, especially considering that she intended to continue humiliating Ursula. Interestingly, no one from the queue, apart from the savior, even lifted a finger to reprimand the insolent cashier. Bending under the weight of the grocery bags, Ursula opened the door and walked outside. Tears continued to flow from her eyes, but she paid no attention to them. Today had turned into a somber day, despite the fact that just an hour or two ago, her mood had been fine. Ursula planned to cook porridge with milk for her children and treat them to sugar cookies with tea. The plans hadn't changed, 
but her emotional state had become disturbed and gloomy. Meanwhile, after waiting for Ursula to leave the store, the man who had helped her approached the cashier and confidently said, You should moderate your zeal, my dear. Who do you think you are to allow yourself such behavior? And who are you? The cashier retorted, I know that you're new to this store and you don't know yet that I'm the owner of the supermarket chain and this store is mine as well. Keep that in mind and behave more decently. At the commotion, the senior saleswoman rushed over and, upon seeing the store owner, immediately fawned. Oh, Senor Lopez, you're unexpectedly here today. We thought you were on a business trip. I had to come back to check on my property, the owner replied angrily. And then something like this happens, it's absolutely unacceptable. What happened, Senor Lopez? The senior saleswoman asked, putting on an innocent face. Well, Aglaia, your protege insulted the customers, the owner pointed at her with his hand. And what's even more offensive, she didn't have enough money to pay for her purchases, and she was willing to leave some items behind. However, the cashier didn't want to wait or was in a rush somewhere, I don't know exactly, and she started calling her indecent names in front of everyone. Elisa, how dare you? I'm sorry, Aglaia, and you, Senor Lopez, Elisa said, lowering her head in guilt. I won't do it again, I promise. She was just holding up the line, and I had to hurry her. Watch yourself, or you'll be swiftly fired, the senior cashier threatened her. Well, that's enough for now, we'll forgive her this time, Alberto intervened. But make sure this doesn't happen again. I won't allow customers to be humiliated in my stores. And convey this message to the rest of the staff, so I won't have to abruptly dismiss anyone. Yes, I understand, Aglaia responded. I will print out a memo right away and distribute it to all the employees. Just please don't fire her, let that be the last resort. Fine, but it's under your responsibility, Alberto warned her with a pointed finger. In the queue, whispers and surprised expressions immediately spread. It seemed like the cashier had taken out her aggression on a regular customer, which often happens in other stores, but the owner stood up for her. It was nonsense, of course. No one expected him to do that. And one could say that Alberto Lopez was a patron or simply a very kind person. Would you like some coffee? I just brewed some, the senior saleswoman kindly offered the store owner. No, no time, too many things to attend to, Alberto shook his head and left the supermarket. Outside, he caught up with Ursula and offered his help with the bags. Let me help you with the bags. They're heavy, and it's no trouble for me to carry them. Oh, you don't have to, I could manage on my own, Ursula replied with a heavy sigh, but she still handed one of the bags to the man. I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself earlier. My name is Alberto Lopez, he said. I'm Ursula, she replied. Thank you again for your help. If it weren't for you, I would have been consumed by shame right there. It's nothing to worry about. It can happen to anyone, Alberto replied. As Ursula looked at him, she noticed his thinness and pale complexion, but he was dressed respectably and didn't resemble an ordinary person. Rather, he seemed well off. Alberto immediately noticed her scrutinizing gaze, and to end Ursula's speculations, he revealed his cards. I am the owner of a supermarket chain, and this is one of them. Are you serious? Ursula asked in surprise. Yes, indeed. I periodically check how my employees are doing. Today I came here, and it seems like it was the right decision to do it discreetly. Well, undercover inspecting your own properties? That's something, Ursula commented with amusement. There's nothing else to be done, Ursula. You always have to keep your hand on the pulse, Senor Lopez said with annoyance in his voice. Otherwise, they'll sense weakness and slack off. I understand, the woman nodded. But rest assured, I will return every penny. Relax, I told you there's no need to return anything, Alberto stood his ground. I don't mind that money, and you managed to fully pay for your purchase. Intuitively, Ursula felt that she shouldn't be afraid of this man and that she could trust him. After all, Alberto acted in a noble manner. 
Despite the difference in their social status, without realizing it, Ursula opened up to him and started telling him about her life. The store owner attentively listened and nodded sympathetically in response. It seemed like they had found common ground and instantly became good friends. I grew up in a poor family, and from a young age, I knew the value of money, Ursula spoke. We didn't have much wealth at home, so we had to economize on everything. My mother worked as a mail carrier, and my father died due to a workplace accident. Sadly, nobody from the management helped with his funeral. He dedicated many years to that factory, and in the end, they didn't even provide a wreath for his grave. I'm sorry for being so blunt, but it's my habit to speak my mind. At that moment, Alberto let out a heavy sigh and broke out in hives, and Ursula thought he didn't look well. Are you all right? Should I call an ambulance? No, I'm fine, Alberto waved it off. Please, continue. Well, my mother raised me on her own, Ursula nodded. She did everything she could to ensure we had the basics to eat. I won't deny that I didn't have much and I don't regret having to live that way. It toughened me up. And that's the most important thing. You didn't fear difficulties and didn't give up. Many people I know couldn't find their path in life and they just sank to the bottom of society. I got married at a young age, that's just how it happened, Ursula continued her story. My husband was a good person, and everyone envied me back then, saying that I had won the lottery of happiness. But for me, it was important that we were compatible in character. Alberto nodded in response and then glanced into the distance, as if he had seen someone. Ursula strained her eyes, trying to see, but there was nothing there. The road ahead of them was empty, as if everyone had vanished in an instant. Shaking his head, as if clearing away an invisible web, Alberto looked at Ursula and said with a smile, I've been listening to you and didn't notice the silence that had fallen. Ah, uh, yes, I also got lost in my thoughts, Ursula nodded. In my marriage to Edgar, we had four children. We were the happiest parents in the world. Why are you speaking in the past tense? Alberto cautiously asked, my husband passed away, I'm sorry, Ursula lowered her head and quietly wept. Alberto involuntarily flinched because he thought that Ursula would continue telling him about how they raised their children and cherished every day together. But it turned out that this seemingly delicate woman had experienced a lot of sorrow in her life and the incident at the store only further crushed her. Oh, if he had known from the beginning what fate had in store for Ursula, he would have immediately put that rude cashier in her place and prevented her from tormenting this poor woman. After a brief pause, Ursula continued talking about her family. Her husband was a construction worker, and his professionalism was highly valued. It was after the birth of their youngest daughter that he started considering changing jobs. Edgar wanted to earn even more. Although they had enough money in the household, he dreamed of having their own house where they could all live comfortably. And it had to have children's rooms and spaces for play and entertainment. With this thought in mind, Edgar decided to go abroad for work. Ursula, of course, didn't agree with the idea, but she didn't openly oppose it. She wholeheartedly trusted her husband, and if he had made up his mind to go, then he must have considered everything. Especially since Ursula herself had long wanted to improve their lives, primarily for the sake of their children, so they would never be in need. With his wife's support, Edgar set off on his journey, believing that success awaited him. Anxious waiting lasted for two months. Ursula called her husband almost every day to inquire about his well-being. At first, he would answer immediately, but then he would do it only when he had free time. It was during this time that Ursula's heart began to fill with unhealthy concerns, not about infidelity, but about his well-being. She never doubted Edgar's faithfulness, especially since he gave her no reason to. And then, unexpectedly, news came that her husband had died in a car accident. Edgar's supervisor reported that he had taken a couple of weeks of leave to visit his family, but didn't wait for the company's transportation and decided to hitchhike. Naturally, all his co-workers tried to dissuade Edgar from this plan, but he didn't want to wait, especially since the company's bus was scheduled to arrive at the site only three days later. 
Ursula's husband didn't want to waste precious time, and that became his fatal mistake because halfway through the journey, the driver of the lorry he was hitchhiking with lost control on a turn, and the lorry plunged into a river at high speed. The long-haul driver died on the spot without regaining consciousness, and Edgar's body was never found. Despite several days of search and rescue efforts, they couldn't locate him. It was as if Ursula's husband had vanished into thin air. Eventually, the search was called off, assuming that Edgar had perished and his body was swept away by the swift current. In such a situation, it was impossible to find the body. This final information was relayed to Ursula. In the end, she had to come to terms with the fact that she was now a widow with four children on her hands. It was difficult, of course, to come to this realization, but apparently, that was how fate had decided. Ursula spent several days crying nonstop, and despite the efforts of her family and loved ones to console her, nothing seemed to work. All she could do was observe her emotional torment and pray to God that she wouldn't lose her sanity. Due to the fact that his body was never found, Ursula had to bury an empty coffin with her husband's belongings. She placed new clothes, which Edgar hadn't worn yet, inside. It was a magnificent suit that he had planned to wear to greet guests at his anniversary celebration. She also included his black leather shoes. Edgar loved classic style and appreciated its elegance. Ursula didn't hesitate to part with these items as a way to pay tribute and bid farewell to her husband. She wanted him to remain the most beautiful memory. About a year had passed since then, and Ursula seemed to have somewhat adapted to the fact that her husband was no longer by her side. Even the children no longer bothered their mother, asking where's dad? In the beginning, they would have tantrums, demanding to meet him because it was not easy for them to understand that he was in heaven. And only recently did the children stop pestering their mother, fully realizing the loss of their father. Ursula emotionally recounted all of this to Alberto Lopez. It felt as if she had been bottling it up inside her for a long time, and now it all came pouring out. At the same time, the store owner didn't rush to interject with his own remarks. He walked beside her, lost in thought. Ursula even felt that Alberto was in a different dimension at that moment. The skin on his face was so taut that all the vessels and capillaries were visible. Regardless of what people say, even wealthy individuals were not devoid of compassion. Apparently, Alberto was so deeply moved by this story that he mentally visualized it, to the point that he didn't even notice when Ursula took a photo of her husband out of her sweater pocket. Here, this is my Edgar, she said, pointing at him through her tears. Taking the photo from her hands, Alberto studied it for several minutes, as if searching for something familiar. In the picture, Edgar was smiling, as happy people usually do, and he had no reason not to be. Children, a home, a loving wife, everything surrounded him abundantly. The photo captured him in full height, with well-defined features of a contented person. I sympathize with you, Ursula, Alberto finally spoke after a long silence. It's a great tragedy for a family when a loved one is lost. Yes, thank you for your sympathy, Ursula nodded. Time heals, as we say. Perhaps... But not everyone manages that, Alberto replied with sadness in his voice. By the way, if you want, I can help in the search for your husband. But the rescuers didn't find anything, she answered with doubt in her voice, and it's unlikely that you'll succeed. I'll give it a try, maybe we can at least locate his body, Alberto insisted. Who knows, maybe someone saw something or has some information. I would be grateful to you, Ursula said. You've already done me a great kindness. I don't know how to thank you. It's not necessary. I genuinely want to help, Alberto replied, winking with his left eye. However, Ursula immediately sensed that he reacted somewhat hesitantly to her words about time healing, and to cut to the chase, she decided to ask, Did your family also experience some sorrow? Well, how should I put it, Alberto began, but Ursula interrupted him for a moment. Here, we've arrived. This is where I live, she pointed to the old four-story house. Let's sit on the bench, and you can tell me. All right, if you're not in a hurry, Alberto nodded. I've also had a difficult life, so I understand you better than anyone else. 
my only and beloved son, Fabian, died while on a mission in one of the hotspots. For obvious reasons, I can't disclose where exactly. Yes, of course. I had such dreams of having grandchildren, that's why I cherished my son, Alberto continued. We went fishing and hunting together, spent time at the country house, enjoying nature. What else was needed for happiness? At this point, he paused and looked at the clouds. He ran his hand over his face, as if wiping away water, and said, I never got to have grandchildren, my son didn't make me happy. Six months after his death, my wife Nora passed away. Her heart couldn't bear it. The doctors couldn't do anything and just recorded her death. And all of this happened before my eyes. I felt as if I had fallen into a dark pit. My wife and son left me alone, perhaps to live and suffer. Don't say that, they didn't do it on purpose, Ursula tried to reassure him. Yes, as you can see, even the wealthy cry, Alberto wiped away his tears and concluded. You surprised me, you know, Ursula unexpectedly said. How so? I would have never thought that a wealthy person could easily send their own son to serve in a hotspot and defend the interests of their homeland. I believe it's normal, Alberto replied, every man should be a patriot of their country. Besides, my son made his own choice, I didn't insist. My wife and I offered him a career in our company, but he refused. Your son was brave and courageous, Ursula added, I would even say responsible and determined. Oh, there was no one like him in that regard, Alberto nodded. Fabian always set goals intelligently, never turned back halfway, regardless of the difficulties. We're having such a heartfelt conversation, Ursula stood up and pointed to the entrance. Would you like to come in and have some coffee? Thank you very much, but with your permission, I'll decline, Alberto replied, shaking his head. Lately, I haven't been feeling well. Doctors keep talking about some tumor and insist on surgery, but like a little boy, I keep putting it off. You're doing it in vain. I noticed your paleness right away, Ursula shook her head. Medicine is advanced nowadays, you shouldn't be afraid of it. Besides, there are probably options for you with a private clinic. Oh, I'm not afraid, just don't have the time, Alberto forced a smile. And the paleness is due to problems with my blood pressure. It keeps fluctuating, sometimes shooting up, and other times dropping sharply. I take pills, but they don't always help. That's exactly why you need to undergo an examination, Ursula insisted. Well, maybe some other time, if I have the time, Alberto nodded. As for your husband, I'll try to find out something. It's so pity you declined the coffee, Ursula said. I'll be waiting for news. After that, they exchanged phone numbers and said their goodbyes. Alberto Lopez was indeed sick, but he always postponed treatment. He wasn't afraid of doctors, it's just that there was no one to leave his business to, especially now, with the recent incident, where it was necessary to strengthen control even more. After all, employees could easily take advantage and slack off. He couldn't allow that because it would mean admitting his own weakness. To start the search, Alberto needed the services of a detective. One of them was Leonardo Diaz. Before retiring, he worked as a senior investigator in the homicide division. Alberto planned to meet with him without delay, unlike his own illness, which he kept putting off. Within 40 minutes, he arrived at the location and looked up at the windows of the third floor. It was where the detective lived, someone with whom Alberto had close ties in his youth. Leonardo, as a young investigator, was involved in solving the murder of a young boy. Alberto was a suspect because traces of blood and the victim's fingerprints were found in his house. But it was soon revealed that he had been framed, and it was Diaz who proved it. He himself tracked down the killer and made the arrest. The young investigator was rewarded and promoted in rank. Later, Leonardo built a career and became a senior investigator. Just before retiring, he had the opportunity to work as the department chief for six months. Opening the door after the third ring, Leonardo greeted Alberto with a wide smile and said, Alberto, it's been a while since we last saw each other. 
Embracing his guest, he ushered him inside the apartment and immediately led him to the kitchen. Let's have a drink to celebrate the reunion. I won't refuse, Leonardo, Alberto patted him on the shoulder. We've been seeing each other less frequently lately. I got fully immersed in my business, and you're always busy, Alberto replied, spreading his arms. That's why we don't meet as often as before. Good thing we still remember each other's addresses. That's true, means our brains are still working, Leonardo nodded. Well, let's drink. After emptying their glasses, they enjoyed a salad and slices of ham that the detective had thoughtfully taken from the refrigerator. It's worth noting that his apartment was in perfect order. Every object and item had its designated place. Even during his time as an investigator, Leonardo had developed an iron discipline, which he continued to uphold, despite his wealth that could afford him a helper. You know, Leonardo, I didn't come to you for no reason, Alberto Lopez said, pushing the salad plate away from himself. I already guessed that. You've always been a secretive person, Leonardo nodded. Sometimes, I had to pry every word out of you. And after your son's death, you became even more closed off. You should know that it's a sore subject for me, Alberto replied with frustration in his voice. Sorry, I got carried away in the wrong direction, Leonardo waved his hands. What happened to you? Tell me. I need your help as a detective, Alberto answered. I know that you've earned more in this field than in the police. Oh, really? So Investigator Diaz is not in fashion nowadays? Leonardo joked. Why would that be? Your skills have always been highly regarded. But this time, I need a detective. Believe me, I came to you with a good offer that will be hard to refuse. Well, all right, I'm listening attentively. Go ahead and present it, preferably with detailed specifics. Today, I met a good woman named Ursula. We started talking, and she told me the story of her husband's death. He was returning home hitchhiking when the driver of a trailer lost control and it happened. The car fell into the river, the truck's owner died, but they couldn't find Edgar's body, that's what Ursula's husband was called. Alberto, have you found yourself a life companion and want to get rid of the competition? Leonardo joked again. I appreciate your sense of humor. But Nora is still in my heart, Alberto replied reproachfully. I'm sorry, it was a failed joke, continue. So, she buried an empty coffin with her husband's belongings, Alberto continued. But I have doubts that he died. Why do you think so? The detective asked. If, as you said, the car fell into the river, there's a high probability that he simply crashed, the current carried away his body, and wild animals might have eaten it. I also thought about that, Alberto nodded. Nevertheless, I'm asking you to take on this case. What do you say? Can you find him? At least his body, so Ursula can give her husband a dignified burial. Well, I can't guarantee anything, Leonardo shrugged. But I'll do everything in my power. Don't be offended if there's no positive outcome. Of course. I understand it all, Alberto agreed. It's a challenging case, traveling far, and there's no guarantee of finding anything. By the way, where did the accident happen? Let me write down all the information Ursula gave me on a piece of paper, Alberto said, taking out a notepad from his inner pocket. He jotted down the sparse details he had at that moment. It's not much, but it's something, Leonardo said, looking at the notes. My deal with one of the clients will be concluded in a couple of days, and then I'll take care of your case. Just don't delay, Leonardo. I promised Ursula. Of course, I've never let you down, the detective replied. Maybe another drink? I've had enough. My blood pressure is acting up, Alberto declined. Once you find this person for me, then we'll have a heartfelt celebration. I'll even bring out a ten-year-old brandy. Consider it done. With that, they parted ways. Alberto went home, and Leonardo started calling his informants. He couldn't refuse to help his friend. 
After all, after the case when Leonardo literally saved Alberto from prison, a strong bond of friendship had formed between them, and they hadn't wavered from it over the years, no matter how difficult life became. As for Ursula, she was reluctant to believe that Alberto would succeed. Too much time had passed since then, and the rescuers assured her back then that it was all futile. Moreover, no one from the street had ever offered such assistance before, and suddenly, the owner of a supermarket chain took up the search. She didn't believe in miracles, especially ones that promised to fulfill any of her dreams. And yet, she dreamed of being by her husband's side again. Although she had already become accustomed to dealing with her difficulties alone, his strong masculine shoulder wouldn't hurt. That's what she thought about, but she understood that the dreams were unlikely to come true. Her husband wouldn't come back to life and wouldn't be the same as before. As Ursula grew more anxious, she expected fewer results from Alberto. Moreover, he didn't give her any encouragement, always answering on the phone when Ursula called him. I'm searching, be patient. Of course, he could be understood. After all, he didn't possess a database of all deceased people in the country. But now Ursula couldn't wait anymore because with all her heart, she wanted time to turn back. This continued until she realized the futility of her fuss. Weeks passed, then another, and Alberto didn't provide any information. From that moment on, Ursula stopped waiting altogether. Meanwhile, Leonardo was digging up the ground in search of information. He utilized all his connections to stir up the right people. One could say he set the gears of history in reverse. He also didn't forget to update Alberto. Alberto would call him periodically, and Leonardo would respond. Alberto, I've made some progress in this direction. I think everything will fall into place soon. That was more than enough for Alberto to believe in the detective's abilities. Leonardo continued his search, and soon enough, his efforts paid off. He found the missing link in the chain and held onto it like a drowning man grasping at a lifeline. On that day, Ursula was at home because she had a day off. She had planned to spend quality time with her children, but unexpectedly, there was a knock on the door. She wasn't expecting any guests, so she went to open the door with great surprise. In an instant, her face contorted in horror because standing at the threshold was her husband, Edgar. He was pale, noticeably thinner, and there was a crimson scar on his forehead. Overwhelmed with joy that her spouse had returned, Ursula burst into tears and attracted the attention of her children. Within a minute, they all gathered in the hallway as if by magic. Cries and exclamations of astonishment filled the space of the apartment and echoed throughout the staircase. And behind Edgar stood Alberto, smiling. It was clear that his assistance was indispensable. Ursula had doubted him in vain. He had fully lived up to the expectations he had taken upon himself. Edgar entered the apartment, surrounded from all sides by his children. For an hour, they didn't give him a moment's rest, hugging him and crying, but Ursula was the most overwhelmed. She couldn't believe her eyes that her husband was alive. She pinched herself twice, thinking she was dreaming, but everything was happening for real. Edgar even tried to talk to her about something. However, it didn't go very well for him, most likely due to stress and excitement. Finally, Alberto took charge of the situation and loudly stated, I think it's time to clarify some things. What do you think, Edgar? Yes, it's time. Too much time has passed, he nodded. Edgar began his story by thanking everyone who had saved him and participated in the search. The tragic event occurred in the evening when he was on his way to meet his family. Edgar was in such a hurry that he unintentionally urged the driver to speed up, and the driver politely complied without thinking about the consequences. They were on a winding road with sharp turns. And it was precisely on one of those turns that the car spun out of control. In an instant, the truck veered off the road and, due to momentum, rolled down towards the river. They didn't even have time to react because the speed affected the intensity of the impact. As a result, Edgar's head struck a rock and the current carried him along the riverbed. Perhaps he would have kept floating until he drowned or was eaten by wild animals. However, Edgar was lucky as he was found by some vagabonds. 
They had settled in the woods and made a living by fishing. When they stumbled upon his body, they initially thought he was a corpse, but upon pulling him out of the water, they realized he was alive, just unconscious. The vagabonds took Edgar and brought him to their makeshift hut. He spent a month there in a delirious state, constantly calling out to people. No one could make sense of what he was saying as he whispered, barely uttering words. Edgar was in a state of confusion, unaware of what was happening around him. Occasionally, he would open his eyes, only to drift back into oblivion. Interestingly, the vagabonds didn't abandon him, they continued to take care of him. It was as if Edgar had been given a second chance at life. Gradually, he started to regain his senses, but couldn't remember anything that connected him to his past life. Edgar struggled to piece together the facts, the timing, and the events, but he couldn't make anything out of it. Out of frustration, he nearly took his own life, but the vagabonds managed to intervene just in time. They gave him a temporary name since he couldn't remember his own. Thus, Edgar became Reuben. He started to help his rescuers catch fish to sustain himself because he couldn't just lie in the hut and stare at the ceiling. Besides, he hoped that by doing so, he would eventually recall his past and find his way back home. Edgar understood that this place wasn't where he was meant to be. Time passed, but clear thoughts about his past didn't come to him. Then, Edgar decided to turn to the police. However, he didn't have any identification documents with him. Most likely, they had fallen out during the accident, making it impossible for him to prove his identity. Nevertheless, Edgar took the risk and attempted to explain himself to the police. They listened to him, but only laughed. Every day, they dealt with vagabonds and homeless people, and Edgar was no exception. Failing to receive any help from law enforcement, he returned to the hut with a heavy heart. Edgar even contemplated leaving, going wherever his eyes could take him, but the vagabonds brought him back to his senses and prevented him from making rash decisions. He stayed. However, help soon came from an unexpected source. Edgar couldn't believe his luck when strange people approached him and presented facts from his past life. He listened for a whole hour to what he had longed to remember. Then, the detective intervened and explained the purpose of his visit. Leonardo carefully prepared Edgar for the rehabilitation process as it was necessary to restore his memory and bring him back to a stable condition. Upon learning about the search results, Alberto personally financed Edgar's treatment. He was the first to visit him at the clinic. How are you feeling? Better, but still a bit nauseous, Edgar replied. It happens, it will pass. The main thing is to regain your strength, reassured Alberto Lopez. Are you sure this will help? Edgar scanned the room. Of course, the best doctors in the region work here, nodded Alberto Lopez and wished him a speedy recovery. At the clinic, Edgar received assistance in dealing with the negative effects of amnesia. He slowly remembered a significant portion of the events from his past life and was delighted to discover that he had a wife and four children. Edgar even shed tears when Senor Lopez visited him once again. You understand how fortunate it is to have a family, he said. Yes, that's absolutely true, and they are eagerly waiting for you, Alberto replied, patting him on the shoulder. I can't wait for the therapy to be over so I can go home, Edgar lamented. Just a little more to go, hang in there, Alberto assured him. After some time, Edgar was discharged from the hospital. He was overjoyed and practically ran out of the medical facility. Alberto took him to his place to finalize his preparations. First and foremost, Edgar was dressed in new clothes as he needed to appear somewhat presentable before returning home. And so, he found himself at the doorstep of his apartment, albeit a bit pale and thinner. Upon hearing her husband's story, Ursula burst into bitter tears. I had already buried you, she confessed. Forgive me, my love, I'm so ashamed. Don't blame yourself, you didn't know anything, Edgar tried to console her. We must say thank you to Senor Lopez for organizing the search for me. We are so grateful to you, Ursula turned to him, we will be indebted to you for life. Stop it, no debts needed, Alberto reprimanded her. It's enough that you allow me to help your family. It's divine providence, Ursula pleaded. 
I never imagined that there are such kind-hearted people in the world. From that day on, Alberto Lopez took Ursula and Edgar's family under his wing. He decided not to leave people who had gone through such trials and distress. After Edgar fully recovered, Alberto arranged for him to work as a distributor. Edgar was in charge of supplying various goods to stores. He enjoyed his work because he finally reintegrated into normal society. At the same time, without even realizing it, Alberto became like a beloved grandfather to Ursula and Edgar's children. He visited them so often that they considered him part of the family, especially the youngest daughter. The girl would light up when Alberto appeared in their home. However, one day, Alberto fell ill and was urgently admitted to the hospital. He initially refused, but the doctors insisted. They reminded him of a tumor that had supposedly been detected during an examination. With no other options, Alberto agreed, especially since he had been feeling worse lately. Ursula grew deeply worried and visited him almost every day. Edgar also visited old man and reassured him that everything would be fine, or at least, that's what he wanted to believe. Alberto remained hopeful, especially because he had people who genuinely loved him by his side. However, after a few days, Alberto's condition worsened and the doctors decided that a blood transfusion was necessary. However, it turned out that Alberto had a rare blood type and none of his relatives matched. The situation was critical as time was running out, possibly minutes. Unexpectedly, information surfaced that there was one donor available. The news came from the clinic where Edgar was undergoing his rehabilitation therapy. Alberto was perplexed but gave his approval for the procedure. The doctor informed him that their blood types were similar in genotype. Alberto couldn't believe that such a thing was even possible. As a result, after the transfusion, he insisted that DNA testing be conducted. All samples were sent to the laboratory for analysis and they awaited the results. Meanwhile, Alberto began to recover and hurriedly informed Ursula and Edgar about the developments. On the same day, they rushed to the clinic to personally verify and congratulate him. As you can see, medicine truly works miracles, Alberto praised the local doctors. I told you they would help you, Ursula nodded with joy. And most importantly, a big thank you to Edgar, Alberto continued. If it weren't for him, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. Oh, come on, I just gave you my blood for the transfusion, Edgar waved it off. And that's what helped, Alberto Lopez replied, raising his index finger. At the same time, he had not yet informed Edgar about the DNA test he had ordered. He couldn't reveal such information prematurely without confirming its truthfulness, so he remained calm. Thanks to the efforts of the doctors, Alberto Lopez felt better with each passing day. He no longer felt fatigued, and the headaches that used to plague him were gone. Finally, the results arrived, and Alberto was greatly surprised to learn that Edgar was his son. But that couldn't be possible. For him, Fabian was the only person he considered as his true family, and he had invested his heart and soul into him. To dispel his doubts, Alberto once again turned to Leonardo, who conducted a new investigation. The facts he managed to uncover were simply shocking. Alberto had just been discharged from the hospital and arrived home to Ursula and Edgar, who were already waiting for him, having prepared a hearty meal and summoned the children. Taking a glance at them, Alberto asked them to follow him to the living room. I have a very serious conversation to have with you. What, didn't they cure you completely? Ursula asked anxiously. No, everything's fine with that, Alberto shook his head. They did a great job, even better than expected. But I came to share some different information. We're listening attentively, Edgar said. How can I put this right? Alberto hesitated, but it seems that you, Edgar, are my son. Edgar nearly fell off his chair upon hearing that. He immediately broke out in a sweat, and his face turned red. Ursula's eyes widened in disbelief because she never expected such news. I can't believe it. But how is that even possible? Edgar asked, surprised, as he snapped out of his stupor. 
I couldn't believe it at first, but then I reread everything and convinced myself that it's true, Alberto replied and handed Edgar the document with the DNA test results. Edgar carefully read through it and ran his hand through his hair. Well, this is truly shocking news, indeed, he uttered after a moment of confusion. I'm sorry, but I had to conduct the DNA test, Alberto continued. The thing is, after the donor was found in you, they informed me that our blood types were similar. I didn't believe it, and that's when the doctors provided evidence. After the procedure was completed, I contacted the laboratory. I still don't understand how this could have happened, though, Ursula interjected. We'll find out soon enough, Alberto replied. I asked our detective to gather all the information regarding the birth of my son. A couple of hours later, the doorbell rang once again. It was Leonardo. Good day, he greeted everyone cheerfully and began to deliver the information. It turned out that there was a fire in the maternity ward where Alberto's wife was staying. However, Alberto only learned about it upon returning from a business trip. He was assured that his wife was unharmed and that everything was fine, but he was also informed about the birth of a son. Initially, it seemed like an incident that could be considered resolved. However, no one could have anticipated that the children would be mixed up due to the carelessness of the medical staff. Amidst the chaos of the fire, all the babies were moved to one room. In an unfortunate turn of events, the tags indicating Alberto's son and another boy got lost. When the fire was contained, everything was returned to its place, albeit with mistakes. The children were essentially switched, and Alberto's wife was handed someone else's baby. Leonardo finished his story and looked at his grateful audience. For the first two minutes, they didn't react, particularly Alberto, but then he seemed to break through. So, it turns out that I have been raising someone else's child my entire life? He asked, astonished. It appears so, Leonardo replied with a hint of sadness in his voice, but I don't see anything wrong with that. The important thing is that you considered him your own son. You're right about that, Alberto agreed, but it's still a lot to comprehend. But you poured your heart into him, Ursula supported. And he was grateful to you for that. So, Edgar is my only son, Alberto stated, and I knew nothing about him. Alberto, it's not your fault, the detective reassured him. Instead, think about how much happiness you've gained. If someone told me that they found my son, I'd jump to the ceiling. I am truly happy, Alberto said. I'm just in a mild state of confusion at the moment. It's all right. Everything will be fine. The important thing is to accept this fact, Leonardo concluded. Well, it seems like my mission here is done. I have to leave you now. Thank you so much, Ursula expressed her gratitude. You've done so much for our family. I will pray for you for the rest of my life. May you have good health and luck. Honestly, I didn't expect this. Leonardo became flustered, but thank you too. Alberto, if anything, I'm always available. Call me anytime. Alberto nodded in response, and then, when Ursula was seeing off the guest, he finally regained his composure and embraced Edgar in a fatherly manner. Now he truly realized that his own son was standing before him. Tears streamed down the old man's eyes, and he didn't even try to hide them. Edgar, too, was moved, as he had become a witness to significant events in his life for the second time recently. Ursula invited everyone to celebrate this momentous occasion. The reunion of father and son couldn't be left unnoticed. Alberto stayed overnight at their place and slept in the children's room. But before that, he spent an entire hour telling stories to his grandchildren. Now he was their true grandfather, not just a guest, and he could shower them with all his love, which he did. The next day, he invited everyone to his village. There, he had a large house where he would retreat from the noise of the city. Ursula noticed a small structure resembling a chapel and asked him cautiously, Is it in honor of your wife and son? Yes, you're right, Alberto nodded. I built it right after Fabian's death and later added my wife's initials as well. They are buried together in the cemetery and this is our family chapel. I come here to find solace and talk to them. 
I understand. I won't disturb you. Ursula left him alone and asked the children not to bother their grandfather for now. Meanwhile, as he looked at his father standing by the chapel, Edgar also approached, removed his headgear, and crossed himself. They stood silently for a few minutes, each lost in their own thoughts. Wiping his face and turning to his son, Alberto said, I hope I won't lose you again. That won't happen, Dad, Edgar replied and hugged his father tightly. Ursula observed this scene from a distance and rejoiced inwardly as fate had returned her husband to her alive and had even given her a father-in-law. It seemed like these events were not supposed to happen in her life at all. They spent several days in the countryside, relaxing, bonding, and having fun. Meanwhile, Alberto decided to make Edgar his business partner and, in order not to waste any more time while he was still alive, sent him to an accelerated course on economic literacy. At first, Edgar was reluctant, but under pressure from his wife, he agreed, especially considering the promising prospects it offered. Alberto confessed to himself, I'm not a mortal, and I need a successor. There's no one else to pass on the business to. I actually thought everything would be lost after my death. Why do you think that way? Things are going well, after all, Edgar said. It only seems that way, Alberto waved his hand, in reality, I've had one foot in the afterlife for a long time. Nora and Fabian are waiting for me there. I see them in my dreams every night. All right, Dad, we have a deal. I'll try to grasp the intricacies of the business, and you promise me that you'll let go of those thoughts, Edgar said. During the courses, Edgar absorbed all the information the instructors provided, took meticulous notes, and practiced his skills, realizing that in the future, he wouldn't have anyone to guide him. Edgar was preparing himself for any difficulties that may lie ahead. Alberto didn't overlook his grandchildren either. He created the most favorable and comfortable conditions for them because he had confessed to Ursula that he wanted grandchildren. Fabian didn't have the chance to give him that, but at least Edgar brought him four grandchildren. Alberto spent time with them almost every day, showering them with his care. Eventually, he decided that fresh air was much healthier and moved the family to that countryside house. Essentially, it became their own property because Alberto made it clear that all his possessions would be passed on to them. He waited until his son fully immersed himself in the business and then handed over the reins of power to him. All these years, Alberto had been spinning like a squirrel in a wheel. It was time to give way to the young ones and let them show what they were capable of. Edgar proudly accepted this gift and promised that the stores would flourish under his leadership. He had already taken the first steps. However, there were still many challenges ahead. Over time, the Alberto supermarket chain claimed leading positions in the city, and its reputation spread to the region and even at the federal level. Naturally, this led to an influx of investments, and the entire family found themselves in the spotlight. After some time had passed and the passion subsided, Edgar sincerely confessed to his wife. I never thought that recovering my memory would lead to such consequences. I didn't expect our lives to change so dramatically either, Ursula replied. Having handed the business over to his son, Alberto Lopez fully dedicated himself to his grandchildren. He moved into the countryside house and spent all his free time with them. And they were delighted to have their grandpa's company because he loved telling interesting life stories. If you're enjoying it as well, Leave a like and subscribe to the channel.